Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Ghost from Ghost Consultant and today we are diving into an important topic in the realm of cyber security called as data loss prevention or as some of you might know DLP. Now in this video we will be focusing specifically on Forcepoint DLP which is one of the leading solutions in the industry. You can also find them on the Gartner report for 2024. Now, the reason that we are choosing Forcepoint for our lab setup is first, it is a versatile deployment. It supports both endpoint and network deployment, making it a flexible option for many organizations. Second, it has a seamless integration with Pool and James DCS. Our environment already has a DCS solution. You remember from our previous videos. Just like we did in our DCS playlist, this series itself is going to be hands-on, implementation focused and comprehensive. Our goal here is to first understand the fundamentals of data loss prevention and second to demonstrate how BLP can be configured and optimized in a real world lab setup. Now what to expect from this series is the installation of Postpoint DLP, creating and managing data protection policies, deploying some of the endpoint agents, and then fine tuning our policies to ensure we have less false positives and we ensure that our solution is precise. Once we have completed that, we'll look into other integrations which are available with the DLP solution. Data loss prevention refers to a strategy and set of technologies used to detect, prevent and respond to unauthorized transmission of sensitive information. Whether it's data leaving the network, being copied to a USB drive or being sent via email. The goal of a DLP is to safeguard sensitive data such as intellectual properties, customer information and internal communication from both accidental leaks as well as malicious insider threats. Postpoint is widely recognized for its deep context aware protection and flexibility across hybrid environments. Some key features that Postpoint offers is unified policy management. It can combine the capabilities of your web channels as well as your endpoint channels. Now using Forcepoint, you could also go on to deploy web security as well as email security. We can leverage out of the box compliance templates called as built-in classifiers. And it has classifiers for regulations like GDPR, HIPAA, PCI DSS and much more. We can also combine DLP with behavior analytics to adapt enforcement based on users risk profiles. And last but not the least, we can integrate with our classification tool. In our case, it is going to be Bolton James DCS. Now, if you are a security professional, a consultant or just someone trying to build a career in cybersecurity, this series will provide real world insights and lab tested steps to help you understand how to implement and manage DLP effectively. Now starting off with the installation, we are going to start off with the FSM and the DLP. So as you can see, I have the packages for 10.3, which is the latest version. And I have some maintenance release also added here that we are going to upgrade. So starting off, we'll right click on the file. Click on properties, make sure to unblock, hit apply and OK. And we are going to run this setup. So the first step that it usually takes is the extraction process of the software. So while this is extracting, I'll just show you the lab configuration that I'm using. So I have given 16 gig of RAM. As per the force point articles, you will require at least 20 GB. But since this is a single machine and 
we are not going to do it in a production environment this should be fine also i have given four virtual processors or four threads to this cpu so that we have all the things now just make sure whenever you are adding multiple components things like web security and email security along with your data security you go on with the best practices from force point and ensure your machine has enough resources to run the solution all right so once the process has extracted all the files you are going to see this welcome page we're going to start the installation we're going to accept license agreement click on next now the installation type we are just going to have an additional component called as force point dlp i'm just going to click next now the force point installation requires an existing instance of microsoft sql server we already have that in place so we already have our sql instance we're going to click on next these are the two components that we are going to install we are going to click on next so the first one is the force point management infrastructure setup we're going to click next now as always our best practice we are going to change it to the e drive so that in case if my os crashes the c drive is the one which gets reformatted but my application is there on the e drive next all right so in this page we are going to provide our sql server details so our sql is running on the, the host name db and force point and it's listening on 1434 now we can use a windows authentication since i my account is already a sql admin but if you don't have a sql admin make sure to use the sa account now even though it says windows authentication you need to enter your password here this is my password i'm going to click next and it's going to perform a verification check all right now we are on the next page this is my fsm ip that is the ip of this current server this is my domain details and i'm going to put my account click on next all right so now this is our default admin account we are going to give a made up email id and we are going to give it a password now it uses the default password complexity as you can see and we can click on next now i don't have an email setting or an email server as of now so i'm just going to deselect this click on next verify if there's any change that needs to be done since there is none i'll just click on next and we'll wait for this to happen all right so once the installation is completed we are going to click on finish and it's going to run the dlp installer setup now once you get this page you can click on next the installation directory we are going to keep it as e click on next again my domain account user password click on next now this is where we are going to store the local files ideally in a production environment you should keep the incident archiving and system backup on our database folder a path so i'm not going to use this as of now i'm going to click on next this is where our fingerprint database is going to be stored All right So make sure the date and time is correct with your system's time it's correct so we're going to click on next
all right so the installation is completed it took us around three to four minutes but i'll just skip to the end part so that you guys don't have to wait for around three to four minutes all right so once the installation is completed you can click here and verify both the setups are here now we can open a browser go to https colon slash slash localhost colon 9443 this is the port it uses and hit enter and we're going to click on proceed to the local page all right in here we're going to give our username and the password we configured and click on sign in and we'll just give it some time since this is a new installation this can take a minute or two to pop up all right so we are back it took us around three minutes to do this now the first step that you need to do is to select your subscription file so i have mine here and i'm going to click on ok all right so as you can see the subscription is valid ideally whenever you are implementing it in any environment you should look into the essential missing configurations first but since this is our lab and we are going to build it piece by piece the first thing that i would want to do in this video is to come on to the settings go on to general click on user directory and integrate our active directory with it so our active directory is called as ad and we are going to give one user so i'm going to use the same user here with its password this field is optional so you don't need to do this you can click on test connection you'll see test connection is successful and i'm going to click on ok once you have done this we'll come here back to data click on general and come on to user directories we are going to click on new i'm going to give user sync again the same details we're going to provide our user and its password verify the connectivity is successful now this we are configuring it to make sure that the users are synced onto the console as well as for some other requirements now click on ok now we are going to click on it click on import now okay once you've clicked you get this pop-up click on ok and it will start importing the users whichever are in the active directory okay so once the data is synced we will come on to the settings go on to general administrators click on add network account and we are going to search for our user p stock as you can see it's here we are going to move it to the right this is going to be a global security administrator so we are going to click on ok now once you have done that let us quickly verify if it works we are going to click on log off once it logs off you can put the username and the password sign in and as you can see it's now completed that is it for this initial basic video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any videos in this dlp series and i'll see you guys in the next video